I supposed to fall asleep if someone's constantly complaining that there's too much salt or asking where the manager is? That's not what a white noise machine is. Oh. Hello, good morning. Oh, good morning, BBs. It's, you know, it's too early. It's less early than it was. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. But it is exactly 8 a.m. But it's more early than it will be. You're right. That's always true. Hi, good morning. Welcome to the first best and only morning show in existence. I'm Anthony Carboni. And I'm Sage Ryan. And, uh... <sighs> yeah, right? We're getting a lot of compliments on the new overlay and the new music. There's a new overlay and new music? There's a new overlay and new music. We're in the, um, we're like in the direct middle of a transition to like a new look for It's Too Early. And we said, fuck it. See half of it. See half, let's you see. You can see half of it. There's so much cool. to get working. Uh -huh. What if we just got it working in pieces? Yeah. And I think, I think that's pretty all right. I think that's pretty all right too. Uh, however, if you are subscribed to us on Patreon, you probably already saw these. We did uh, post our Patreon clip on Friday with these, and uh, we got some nice feedback. I got sleep junk in my eye. Okay. You know the sleep junk? I do. I got some sleep junk in my eye. I'm sorry to hear it. It's okay. It's okay. I'm all right now. I got all the sleep junk out of my eye. Congratulations, and good morning. How much sleep junk do you think accumulates over the course of, say, a year? If you had to, if you had to quantify the the amount of sleep junk, um, I think if I had to quantify it, I would throw up. Yeah. Into what size container? <laughs> uh, Anthony. Yeah. We've been friends for a while. That's true. We've had the if you get sick around me, I have to leave talk. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what you're doing. Gentle Pete 2 says three pounds worth. That, and, that's outrageous. And then Blade of Creation says, but also you don't have to quantify See, it. And I'm, I'm on Blade of Creation's team here. I'm really liking that take on this, actually. Mm. I'm liking that take of, hey, you just don't have to fucking do that, man. Do you think there's been a study on that? I do. I do believe that there's probably been a study on that. Oh, shit. <laughs> that is a new donation bar and a new donation link. Uh, so for now, just use the one in the panels. I don't know if the one in chat is updated. Um, but uh, hey, we've switched over. We're on new streaming software. We're on a new streaming site. So uh, we moved away from the bad ones. Right. And so now we're on the one that, um, listen. Plagiarism I, element. I'm not going to say that, no, that somebody rather. isn't bad. Uh-huh. That's not what I do anymore. Okay. What I do now is I say the one who we don't know anything bad about yet. Okay, that's fair. I, I've spent way too many years in a row waiting for the other shoe to drop on people and places and things. And so now I'm just like, this is an unknown quantity. It has not been proven to be awful. Okay. So it's not good until proven otherwise. Yeah, it's I'm just... <sighs> I'm doing a reverse innocent bad. until proven guilty. Okay. I can't, I can't live my life that way anymore. <laughs> I'm sorry. Hey, that's perfectly fair. Thank you, Queso, for throwing it up in the chat. I appreciate that very I'm much. I'm not a government. I'm just a man. Uh-huh. And as a, as a man, my personal, my personal uh, policy is be wary. Be wary. That's all. I'm, I'm in favor of cautious optimism. Cautious optimism is definitely what I would say. Uh, hey, everyone. We've got news to talk about. We've got so much news. Hey, yeah. do you like Pokemon? I love Pokemon. Did you ever think there should be more guns? No, no. In no. Pokemon? No, not at all. Because maybe there should be guns? Now, I'm not going to agree with that, but those who have been here with us for a while did see our initial coverage on Pal World, so you probably know what we're, we're referring to. Well, maybe you know what we're referring to, and you would think that I'm referring to Pal World. But what if I told you, look, 
Pal World, sure. There's a new trailer for Pal World. Okay. We'll take a look at that in a moment. Okay. But what if I told you that there's such a desire for Pokemon to have guns that Pal World is not alone? I mean, I'm not going to lie. I'd be surprised. Would you? I would. I would be surprised. Well, a Reddit user named uh, Dragon Game Dev uh -huh. decided recently to make a game a month and thought to himself, the first game I'm going to make uh -huh. is a first-person shooter uh, where you're hunting Pokemon. Oh, no. Yeah. I, I think that's worse. Well... We'll find out. I think that that might be worse than Pal World, y'all. No. Let's see if we can manage this audio. I apologize if it comes in a little strong. Or. Or not at all. Or not at all. That's Here. okay. You want. Ooh. There you go. That really makes it I hit home. Yeah, no, there it is. Go. Yeah, maybe actually. Maybe. No, hold on. Yep. Actually, no, I'm There it is. No, no, there it maybe goes. Not. Turn it off. Yep. Anthony, turn the noise off. Okay. okay. Uh. <laughs> Folks. Nintendo has been going around systematically scraping all clips of this off the internet. Yeah, I can see why. You can see why. Oh. <laughs> I rearranged the buttons. That's on me. Um, so, yeah, Nintendo has completely scraped this. Every time somebody puts it up somewhere new, it's gone almost instantly. Nintendo has gone into overdrive removing... Nintendo, please don't remove today's show. We beg of you. I just... Yeah, you know, we talk a lot about, like... We talk a lot about Nintendo taking down independent creators that create things surrounding the IP. Um, we've talked about their, you know, lack of support, essentially, for the community build. But... I, I, get, I think I'm on Nintendo's side. Yeah, it's tricky, right? No. It's tricky, right? Because... <laughs> Because exactly. like this is this no. is the sort of thing that turns people into like devil like legal devil's advocates where it's like oh so they only have to take it down when it's the one that makes you disturbed. Well, I mean, look, here's the thing with with anything. I mean, we see this a lot with Disney content. A lot of Disney fan parody content exists. Yeah. If that content is on brand for Disney, is not offensive to the characters, is not in some way like, I mean, like you said, disturbing something of that. Generally, it kind of flies, depending on the content and the size of it yeah. as well. But this being, you know, in theory, kind of desecrating to <laughs> the Pokemon yeah. name. Um, honestly, seems pretty fair. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, this is just one person. This is Dragon Dev. He, he did it as kind of, like a, kind of like a gag just to see if he could get it going. Um, and so, you know, hey, Nintendo is right to tear it down. But there's, there's also something else that's going on here, which is like, it's easy for Nintendo to do this because Dragon Dev is one guy, but let's take a look at the new trailer for Pal World. Yeah, I'm with Arachnus Webb on this in the live studio audience who said, how very edgy. Like, uh, okay. Yeah. Okay, you it's made a obviously, you shoot Pokemon. That's so edgy of look, you. It's, yeah, it's some, it's some guy who's learning how to program and is like, ha ha, he he, look at what I did. I can't believe I made the Pokemon do things that they're not supposed to do. Grow up. But at the same time, there is a multi-million dollar game coming out. Is it a multi-million dollar game, Anthony? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, because this is an MMO. This is running on servers. This has got a persistent game world. Let's take a look at the new trailer for Pal World. All right. Uh, I will say, when it comes to Pal World in particular, this is not... I don't know if we can use this music. The music it. slaps, I'll tell you that much. Uh, oh, it's getting louder. Cool. Um, Pal World does not directly use any Pokemon IP. It is no. just very similar, clearly heavily now, inspired by. Does this disturb you like the other one did? No. But I also know not to trust Pal World because in the beginning of the last trailer I wasn't as disturbed yet, and then we got into all of the labor. But we've and already the guns. Right, but we've already seen guns in the beginning of this trailer. These are we've already mowed a couple pals down. I I still don't want to do it yeah but i'm not as disturbed as yeah get on his back he's got a gatling gun as a gun shooting at pikachu look it's yeah. just like when you ride that snorlax uh-huh 
Oh, now see, and now we get some plot for Pal World. Fucking what? No. Yeah, it turns out some of these pals are being experimented on, uh, and they're being forced to build AK forty sevens or the last trailer. <laughs> and of course, they are animals, so they have to eat each other to survive. You see some of the stealth of Pal World there. Pals, they're just pals. Come hang out with your pals every in Pal time, World. Every time they start out and they're like, no, it's just like a nice little MMO. I've, I've gotten bait and switched every time by Pal World. Come and check out, this is your pals in Pal World. Too much. Too loud. <laughs> uh, Pal World is scheduled to be released this year. Uh, there's... What I like, I do like that there seems to be for you and the other player characters of Pal World, there does seem to be a uh, liberate the pals. But sometimes to liberate the pals, we must destroy the evil pals. Yeah, so. Look, there is no revolution without violence, Sage. Uh, okay, sure. Um... Hey, that donut bar is working. Yeah, thanks, y'all. However, um, alerts, not at all. Oh, fun. Um, that's exciting. I, look, I'm in favor of anarchy. Um, but I don't know that video games need to be that for me always. Um, I don't know that my my Pokemon genre video games mm -hmm. um, need to have forced labor in them. Yeah. I think that... It's, I think that's not my escapism. Do you know what it is? It's it's people who sat around and we've we've done this, but you do it for you do it for fun. You do it just to you do it just as like thought experiment weird times, which is like, hey, in a world where there are Pokemon, mm -hmm. why haven't we seen Pokemon doing X, Y, or Z? Right? Like if oh, this, then what? Yeah, that okay. kind of thing. And and we've done that where we sit around and we go like if there were these all these Pokemon and there were these strong Pokemon, why, why wouldn't we use them to build things? Why right. wouldn't we use them to do There's this? The thing that goes around the internet that it would only make sense that humans in the Pokemon universe lay eggs. Yeah, that sort of thing. Theory? Yeah. yeah. That's if everything thing. else does, what, humans just don't? Yeah. Humans are related to Pokemon genetically. Anyways, besides that, I don't know if any amount of if this then what would ever get me to if Pokemon exist then what if they built AK-47? What if they had to build guns? I mean, like, but we see some of it with, like, Mewtwo and, uh, uh -huh. and, like, and, like, even in the first game with, like, Giovanni and stuff like that, where it's like, we're using Pokemon for evil. Sure, but do you think you would ever get to if Pokemon, then Pokemon build AK-47? That's that one is a little bit of a stretch, but yeah. I have that we have definitely gotten to hunting, eating Pokemon. We have talked about that. Yeah. Everybody's talked about. That. Okay, yeah. What does it taste like? What does a Pokemon taste like? Which Pokemon's the tastiest Pokemon? I can't say. I've wondered. Does if you eat something like a Jigglypuff or something like that, do they do they taste like a Marshmallow Peep? Do you think a Jigglypuff tastes like a Marshmallow Peep? No. What does a Jigglypuff taste like? These are just the questions. Who's? Everybody. I. Uh, everybody. Is this everybody's question? I think, and then you get to like the later Pokemon of like the ones that just look like marshmallow fluff cream, and it's like, well, that obviously tastes like a delicious parfait. And you get to the ones where it's just like keys, and it's just like, well, can I use those to just unlock shit? <laughs> I'm gonna be honest with you. Even yeah. the ones who look like I like marshmallowy parfait, mm -hmm. I think it's meaty. Oh, a savory, a savory dessert. I think they're all. <laughs> I think they're all meaty. Okay, I hate that I had to say that, but I did. I do think they're all meaty. Sometimes a savory dessert, a little treat, a pot pie instead of a pie. No. Yeah. Pot pie is not a dessert. No, pot, pot pie is not a dessert. But I'm trying to pot, think pot. of. Oh, I'm trying to think of. Pot, pot. I'm trying to think of. Uh, what's a good savory dessert? I don't know. Alcreme. That's the one I'm thinking of. Alcreme. That's just a. That's just fucking sugar. Sugar fluff. No, I think it's meaty in there, and I don't want it at all. Anyway, 
if these are the sort of things that you wonder and would like to live, I'm sure I'm sure Pal World will. Yeah, they'll probably let you eat a Pokemon. Dude, they have to, right? Pal World definitely lets you eat pals. Probably. We have to stop referring to them as Pokemon because it because it's it puts a sad association in our heart. But so you're fine with it when it's pals. I don't know what a pal is. You saw them. Yeah, I don't have any emotional connection to those pals. Those hey, are new. man. Hey, I'm going to be honest. The show's been live for like 15 minutes, <laughs> and the internet's going to think you're a sociopath. Like, you sound like a sociopath, Anthony. These are the questions that are presupposed by the Pal World trailer. These are the questions. These are the thought experiments. Vacuous Mermaid said a meaty uh, vanillite is giving me brain trauma. Same. I don't want that to be the case. I don't think we should eat Pokemon. I'm just going to say it. I'm going to take the bold stance of what the fuck, Anthony. You're right. Let's not eat Pokemon. But what about a pal? No, I don't want to eat any pals. Okay. Then you don't have to. It might not even be in the Do game. Do you? I don't want to. But if it's a survival mechanic in the game, I'll probably do it at some point. Are you going to play Pal World? I'm going to try Pal World. It looks insane. Of course I'm going to try it. It looks, like it's, it looks like an insanely bad idea. Of course I want to try it. I was really into RuneScape for quite a few years as old a school teenager. RuneScape. You're an old school RuneScape? You babes ever heard of old school RuneScape? <laughs> um, and I, uh, you know, there's survival mechanics in that that you have to eat. Uh, I could not go into the little, like, patches and kill the cows. I couldn't do it. Um, so I would just pick up the parts that people dropped. And that was it. That was the uh, only way I would eat. Tom, making, like, breads and stuff. Tom Bidan is a plant-type pal. Because we're not talking about Pokemon. Is a plant type pal a vegetable or a meat? Um, think about a Venusaur. Mm hmm. Meaty. Even the top bit? No. The top bit I is a vegetable. I think the top bit might have something in there. I don't, I mean, no, it's all going to be vegetable in there, I guess, because we've seen it open. Um, it's tricky. I'm going to see meaty with garnish. I think it's meaty with garnish. Oh, it's got like a it's it's got like a like an like a radish cut into a rose on top of it. Yeah, little parsley. That's classy. Yeah. You could serve a you could serve a Venusaur at a wedding. They seems to be the mind that pal is meat. Well, here's the thing. <laughs> I need you to stop. Also, but now you're what going to down not this. Making it Pokemon. You're huh? going down. What this happened way? to making it pals, Anthony? Okay, let's go back to let's go back to making it pals. <laughs> I can't, I can't name a pal by, by, I can't name one by, like, I don't know sure, what it looks like. Sure, okay. Um, I think plant type would just be like, yeah, I think most of them are garnished. I mm -hmm. think it depends on the plant, though. Like, some look like they'll be plant all the way through, but if, it, if it's got a little, like, meaty animal body, it's got a meaty body. I'm sorry, I want to stop, and you put me in this position. Gardevoir looks like a lady. Is that cannibalism? Okay, nope, that's that's the end of it. Let's move on. <laughs> yeah, no, I found the line. What about something like oh, a champ right. that's just like uh, a dude? Y'all, let's continue a with a little bit of Nintendo news. Uh, we've talked a lot about the N64 <laughs> emulator uh, and how it, you know, wasn't quite the best up to this point. Um, and in huge news, it still isn't. <laughs> <laughs> Breaking news, it's okay. I was so excited for this N64 emulator. I was talking about how big of a deal Banjo-Kazooie was to me on the last show. Apparently, it's like medium news to everybody else. That's okay. Um, and they did go through and do a like graphical improvement on a lot of the N64 um, like cloud ports. But it's like some. Yeah, so along with Banjo-Kazooie uh, came an update to the Nintendo expansion pack. Uh, and the N64 emulator, and people have noticed that certain things have indeed been fixed. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the biggest ones that people were noticing was the water temple, of course, which looked weird as hell. Oh. Me. 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 So this is the water in the water temple now. That's good. It's getting better. Yeah, this does look a lot better. Uh, there's still some there's still some fog missing, uh, and some other effects missing. But that just looked like solid ground. You remember it looked like solid marble. Yeah. Um, if we go to the let me go to the article here because it'll yeah. show a side by side. It is with that side by side. Um, I've got it actually. Yeah. 
So if you look on the right, that's what it initially looked like. That's just a solid texture. Mm -hmm. I don't care who you are. That's just a solid texture. On the left, you can see what it's supposed to look like, and it's still not quite there. Uh, but it's getting better. This Cer is the original game on the left on the N64. Yeah. Certain things, however, people are noticing have not gotten much better. Uh, it's good that they're taking looks at this, but certain big things uh, are not working. Paper Mario uh, has a crash Oh, that is still there. Uh, this is a crash with what? It's a minute-long clip, but basically it'll, it'll just crash on you. Damn. Uh, there's also problems with some of the bosses on Yoshi's Story. Just like weird graphical You're glitches. Yeah, I have to be because of the thing. Awesome. Um, <laughs> so cool. But there's just like mirror effects and things on that boss that aren't working. Oh, yeah, I see that up there. That's, that's so interesting. Yeah. So they're not quite there yet. And what's fascinating is like Nintendo really, for a while, led the charge and led the pack on on console emulation you know mm -hmm. like virtual console and stuff like that really sort of like led the way and worked really well there were some you know there were some issues with virtual console games yeah but most of it had to do with well this used to go through this type of video this type of video hardware and now it's going through a different type of video hardware so some colors look different but this is the correct rom what i will say about the nintendo online um, there's a lot of like criticism that's very valid to be given of all of the footage that I have seen. Very little of it is game breaking for me personally when it comes to like, hey, this isn't a great graphical overhaul. Right. Mm -hmm. When you're going to port it over. Um, I don't really care. Like I would prefer it to be better, mm -hmm. um, but it doesn't take my enjoyment of the game. And, like, I want to sit on my Switch and play Banjo-Kazooie. I don't want to have to load up a fucking ROM on my computer that I have of illegally purchased a copy of Banjo-Kazooie. Of course. Um, I don't want to have to do that. I keep one of and each video game. it's worth it for me. I keep one of each video game that's ever been physically released in an underground vault so uh -huh. I can always ROM. Exactly. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't find that personally game-breaking when there's a thing that it's like, ah, that texture is bad. I'm not like, well... No. Fucking, I guess you just stole the money from me, Tendo. <laughs> no, there were uh there were money many more uh problems earlier on, particularly yeah. like frame rates with the Zelda games, stuff right. like that. Graphical glitches that made it like impossible to see Link in places. Yeah. Uh and some of these are still, you know, kind of bad. Obviously, the fact that Paper Mario crashes during a boss yeah. fight is not great. Uh there are some other things with Switch Online, you know, they uh they released those N64 controllers. Mm -hmm. And uh people were like, "Oh, cool. They'll have support for the controller pack." They don't. And the problem with that is not every N64 game saves to the cartridge. Some of them want an external memory card to be there. And so far, Nintendo hasn't really found a way to make that work. Mm -hmm. And there are save states within there, and that's great. Uh, but some people are like, well, I want to just kind of like save a game or have multiple saves going at once in games yeah. that have like three saves. Right. If there are three save slots, sometimes I like to use them or somebody I live with wants to use it. Yeah. So kind of tricky. Um, Spin and Dash uh, brings up a good point. Uh, said, I wonder why this is the on only the second time I'm hearing about the crashing but I hear nonstop complaining about the fog not being thick enough. I mean, A, it's much easier to take screenshots and show side by side the graphical thing you're upset about. It's not as like appealing to just post a video of your game crashing. Um, so I think that that's part of it. It is that kind of like headline bait stuff by being able to put those side by side images. And also, I mean, the games that are crashing like Paper Mario are not necessarily as popular of people being like, Oh shit, I'm trying to get my Paper Mario in. Yeah, that's 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 my thought on it is immediately everybody wanted to play uh, uh, everybody wanted to play Ocarina immediately. Uh but this is sort of I think this sort of points to something that we've talked about a lot, which is people really want backwards compatibility mm -hmm. and people really want to play their old games 
but they really only want to play their old games a little bit. Yeah. Like, people want to load up Paper Mario. I think most people. I'm not saying everybody. <laughs> I think most people want to load up Paper Mario and be like, yay, it's Paper Mario. I remember Paper Mario. And you play Paper Mario for 20 minutes, and then you go, damn, I love that Paper Mario still exists. And then you go to whatever the new game is you're playing. Say that to my thriving GameCube Animal Crossing Island. Okay. But you're not playing that on your Switch. That's true. But <laughs> when it comes to like, I want to get into my old games, I'd love to be playing it on my Switch. If I had the option to, I would. But I think that's the thing is everybody has the game that they want to play, but most people aren't going to dive into the library. And so... Man, it's weird being dead. With a fucking uh, GameCube? They hit us with a GameCube cloud? I mean, they could. So, but that's the thing is, so for, for most people, it was Ocarina. That was the big deal. Mm -hmm. Holy shit, Ocarina. But for, for this guy, it was Paper Mario. Yeah. And he's playing all the way through. Or for this person, it was Yoshi's Story. Right. And so there aren't as many people complaining about that mm -hmm. because there aren't as many people playing it. Yeah. Uh, I do love Paper Mario. Oh, Paper Mario is amazing. Paper Mario is great. Are you kidding? And the N64 Paper Mario was very good. I mean, Thousand Year Door is the one. Thousand Year Door is the one. Give us that GameCube emulator. Give us the GameCube emulator. Fuck, that'd be so good. They, they got it running. Like, <laughs> I don't get why they wouldn't. I mean, they could. They obviously can. They, they had the Mario All-Stars collection. So GameCube stuff runs. Let me have it. Let us have it. Uh, hey. Give me a little thing so I can put the disc to do it. <laughs> a little external disc drive so I can play them like I did on my Wii. That's such an old school Nintendo thing. That seems like, like a thing Nintendo would do. You can have a disk drive, all right? Yeah, okay. They, they would just add a GameCube disk drive. They're like, GameCube disks are small. We'll just plug it in through the USB-C. <laughs> That's fine. All right, I guess. Y'all want it. Um, if they sold it, would you buy it? I'd buy it just because it's weird. Yeah, same. <laughs> I'd buy it because it's weird depending on so the price. Fast. Uh, You know, I have something I'd like to talk about that I that is sort of in the frame of well, I'm going to say it's sort of in the frame of a PAL world, but it's not as bad. Oh, okay. Oh, I know what this is. Yeah. Have you heard of the Disney Twisted Wonderland? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, uh, we covered a little bit of it on the show. Uh, this was the thing that was blowing up because it was um, like kids of villains, I want to say. It is. What? If I had to describe it, it is anime Hogwarts. For edgy kids that love Disney villains. Yes, that's what it was. Um, it was like a, like hot anime boy Disney villains. Yes. And uh, this is a game. It was created. Uh, the scenario and the characters were created by the creator of the anime Black Butler, uh, which is great. And uh, it's been in Japan for two years. Okay. And, ooh, ooh, this is... <laughs> this is something. It's out now in the States. You can have it. Uh, the game takes place at Night Raven College, a magic school where as a new student, you attend classes, make friends, Incredible. have heated rivalries, uh, but all of, the, all of the houses are based on Disney villains. Not a note in the world. This is all going well. Oh, this is all going absolutely splendid. <laughs> That's sort of, that's sort of right. Yeah, just about. Um. Okay. So let me this, uh let me show you. Okay. Now this that's is, the character art, but is the other one what the show actually looks like? Yeah. Now this <gasps> is now this is uh what I would call probably Sage's house. Uh, this is You're all Maleficent. Diasomnia, the Maleficent house. Wow. These are all kids who love Maleficent. Oh shit. And they want to smooch. I guess. Uh, this is Descendants. Yeah. I, too, love Maleficent and want to smooch. How do I get in? How do you get... Sh 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 fucking download the app. It's free to play. With those gotcha mechanics. And the gotchas are mostly, instead of new characters, the gotcha in this is apparently mostly outfit-based. It's mostly fashion gotcha. Okay, and honestly, I don't super mind fashion gotcha. Um, so this is kind of... People are saying this is Descendants. This is kind of like the Japanese like anime take on Descendants. I yeah. can see that. They didn't um, you know, Disneyfy it in the way that Descendants does, you know, made for TV Disney movie. 
I'm just gonna. Did I make it work? Kind of. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we're making okay, it work. Okay, do we have pictures of the other houses? Uh, let's see. The name of the show. Again. Twisted Wonderland. So, I want to see that screenshot again from the game itself because that is not what I was expecting. No. No, 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 no. It's the like, you know, little chibis. Oh, yeah. The actual gameplay goes Very into. Very funny to me. Yeah. The actual gameplay, like, there are. Uh... Is that Gaston? <laughs> I don't. Who's that supposed to be? No. This is, a, this is a teacher. So, the actual gameplay is kind of like chibi fied, but it's like, you know, it's like a dating sim or a visual novel where, like, the character portraits are very realistic mm -hmm. and then there are parts of the game where everything is very realistic um it's pretty wild so like yeah that looks like gaston right <laughs> it's got it's yeah. got a gaston vibe but he's got the, the color of his shirt the hair yeah but weird, he's got it he's got he's, he's got like a chin, full chin strap beard he's like anime gym coach uh so diasomnia is a maleficent house uh, and the way this works is all of the kids from all the houses uh, think that their villain is the best mm -hmm. and they they hold different traits highly. So like the Scar, ha like if you're part of Scar's house, mm -hmm. uh, you're seen <gasps> as a Scar. persistent, he's seen as a persistent king who loved equality, trying to bring animals together because of the hyenas and the, uh -huh. yeah. Uh, Ursula is seen as a, as a benevolent wish granter. It's not her fault if you if you wish for something you don't want or you don't take a look at what the consequences of your wish are. I'm going to be honest, that is kind of how I feel about a lot of Disney villains. <laughs> yeah. I, too, justify Disney villains. <laughs> a lot. I want to see all of this. I want to watch the show. Uh, this I should is, watch the show. This is the Red Queen's house. This is what they look like. Real, uh, real Malkavian vibes. Uh, except for the fedora wearer right there. Oh, I believe that Malkavians will wear a fedora with a jaunty band. Malkavians will absolutely do that. Welcome to 1989 Vampire the Masquerade I lessons. Just, I just believe they will. Um, I don't like the fedora choice. I'm not digging the milady situation, but I do dig all of the other ones. Mm-hmm. It's kind of fascinating. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Twisted Wonderland game. Let's see what kind let's see what houses there are. Yeah. Somebody in the uh live studio audience was asking, can you build your own characters within it? I don't believe that you can, no. I think you're gonna choose a house and be a representative of that house, but I don't think there's um any character creation in this mobile game. Okay, here's what we've got. Okay. Hearts Labial. Hearts Labial. Hearts Labial. Uh, Savannah Claw. Oh my God. Okay. 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 All right. You play a cat girl in Final Fantasy fourteen, so you gotta. Uh yeah. Could you scroll you a be... little more so it's not behind us? Yeah. Uh no. There we go. Um. Does that qualify as furry? Ooh. Leona. Honestly, I I extend that to the chat. It's cat boy house. I mean, cat boy. Are cat boys full furry? No. Okay. I don't think so. Good. <laughs> I don't think that's full furry. I think something like a B stars is full furry. Because Leona? <laughs> hey, hey, Leona? Hey. What's up? Hey, Anyways, Le uh, what else have we got? Uh, Octavincel, Octavinel. Ooh, Octavinel. Clearly, that is Ursula's house. All fedoras. All fedoras. Nothing but fedoras I all the way down. I'm Floyd's teeth. Floyd Leach. Good Lord. Jaden right. Floyd Leach. Okay, we do. We do enjoy uh we do enjoy a femme in a fedora and a suit though. Like Jade. We like that. That's not too bad. Not too bad. That's not too like, bad. Like, um, it it's... doesn't make me feel as unsafe when, sure. <laughs> when a feminine presenting person does it, but um it's still not like it's not something I'm gonna be like, oh yeah. Uh know? we've got Scarabia. Okay. That's okay. So Jafar's house. Uh-huh. We like that. Jamil, hello. Uh Pama Fiore? Who's Pama Fiore? That's the evil oh, queen. Oh, that's the evil queen, yeah. 
Okay. All right. I think de- I think visually the least interesting house. I also think the Evil Queen is one of the less interesting villains. Yeah. Um. Less le- least developed. Here's Hades' house, Ignahide. <laughs> yes, I fucking love Hades. I'm just a huge fan of Hades. I know you so- are. And look at Ortho Shroud's got the got the mask uh-huh. too. You like the Hades house. I love the Hades house. I don't think like I don't see myself in it. If we're doing the like you know, got my letter to uh, Twisted Wonderland house. Yeah, it's I'm not in it, but I do like them, and I want to be friends. Some real cool cyber goth shit going on here. And then of course there is the Diasomnia, which is the house I see myself in. Yeah, what I like you? their I like their little I like their love little their like. Hats. Of f- flight attendant hats. I love the they're little like hats. information desk hats. Uh, what house would you be in? That's tricky. I don't know. None of them really. None of them are really calling out to me. No, I don't think. I mean, I think potentially the cyber goth one. Potentially the cyber goth one. I think you'd be that or cat boy. I mean, look, I'd be an adorable fucking cat boy, and like nobody's questioning that. Mm-hmm. I'd be an absolutely adorable cat boy. Sure. We know that. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It's tricky. Well, since he doesn't know, what house would you place Anthony in? And am I correct in saying that I would be in Maleficent's house? Is that really, where you place me as well? I really think, I really, it's between Maleficent and Hades. I, I could go either way with you. Yeah? Yeah, I could definitely go either way with you. Thank you. I think it definitely goes. I think if I think it may lean more Maleficent, just based on like they have their hair is more coiffed emo, <laughs> whereas like whereas like Hades's house is like they all have the flaming fiery Hades hair, which is cool. But I mean, if you're talking about like two tone emo hair, uh huh, Maleficent's house. That's yeah. the way you got to be. Yeah, that's the way you got to be. Um, uh, they're uh. Predominantly voting Catboy House for you. Catboy House. I mean, sure. Yeah. Sure. Uh, where the heck is Ursula's House? We just showed Ursula's House. We did show Ursula's House, and honestly, I was a little disappointed you, by yeah, it. Yeah, you probably don't remember that we showed Ursula's House because there wasn't much to it. Because oops all fedoras. Yeah, it was, uh, it's Octavenel here. And like, look, if you just asked me like whose house, Ursula Runs would be a house. top pick for me. <laughs> Like, if I hadn't oh. seen them yet, yeah. Ursula would be a top-tier pick. The Sea Witch, of course. I do I do love the philosophy behind Ursula's house, which is, we grant wishes. It's, it's not our fault if you didn't look into what your happens wish when the wish... Your responsibility. Yeah, you do with that what you will. And I like that they're very mafia because of that. Like, that's funny that to me. That is funny. I uh, will agree with that. You know? I think it's funny from a character perspective. I just am thinking about... I'm, look, I'm making this about me, Anthony, and I'm mm-hmm. thinking about what I would have to wear if I was in the house. I'd love to see, you know, I think there are some, some key villains that are missing, obviously. Yeah. Obviously. Uh, I think the fact that they're not having the, the, the creator of Black Butler make a Disney game and make a house based on Frollo mm. is wild to me because that screams Black Butler to me. Uh. I would obviously like to see a Captain Hook house. Oh my God, a cute pirate house. <gasps> a Cruella house. Yeah, I was actually very surprised they didn't have a Cruella one because that's one of the more classic Disney villains. I mean, I think there's just a, I think there are a few that, uh, that they need that are missing. Um, what else would you like to Tarsier see? Tarsier is like, that's just, that's just Catholics? Yes, <laughs> make a weird evil church. Let's go. Ooh, from Princess and the Frog, yeah. Bring us in that villain from Princess and the Frog. Sheer Khan. Ooh, love that. Oh, and then Overlord Loki are saying some don't have houses because they're teachers. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. But I want to see what their little students would look like. Particularly, I, I'm with you on Hook. Yeah. Hook would be great. Hook would be great. Like Cruella. Okay. Probably why they don't have Cruella is my guess is real hard to justify. It's really hard to justify like what her thing is when you can be like, we grant wishes and you can be like, I'm trying to unite the animal kingdom and all of these things. <laughs> Listen, it's fashion and it's style and it's the natural order of the world. Ah, uh, Yizma, yes. Fashion, style, the natural order of the world. Look, you can't, clothes gotta be made of something. Yeah, 
Um, but yeah, them Yzma. just being like, I wanted to unite the animal kingdom. I believe in granting wishes. We believe in order. I believe in skinning puppies. I believe in, yeah, I believe I need to be warm. And then there's a and bunch that of- And puppy, do you look warm? <laughs> and then there's a bunch of like college age kids being like, yeah, the puppies. <laughs> the puppies. Yeah, uh, yeah, Pete bringing classic Disney. I think, I think it's fun. I think it's fun. Uh, I like that Disney, we've talked about this, I like that Disney is embracing, uh, you know, it kind of started with Kingdom Hearts and they do a lot of stuff like this at the parks uh-huh. and they did it with like House of Mouse and House of Villains. Mm-hmm. I like that Disney is embracing this sort of like fanfic I agree. what if sort of thing. I really think that teacher's supposed to be Gaston if they're all villains. But Gaston doesn't have that. Yeah, I guess it could be. I think it is. It could be. It might be, but it might not be. Uh, I just pulled up a little like list of Disney villains here because we're definitely missing some. Mother Gothel is very fun, man. Uh, a lot of good choices here. There's Doctor Facilier. Oh, Hans is Hans is actually a good one because Hans is like, you know, Hans is almost almost heroic, and you could like you could convince yourself you were a good guy. Okay, yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean. Wicked stepmother. You could convince yourself you were a good guy. Very interesting. I love to talk about Disney villains. I know. I do love it. And hey, if you guys like Disney villains, uh, on our YouTube channel and in the VODs as well, you can go back and watch our Disney villain one shot that we did here on the channel uh, in October. So do it. Do it. I played Kylo Ren. This week, Monsters of the Multiverse releases in D&D. Yes. You want to talk about, you want to talk about bringing villains together. This is interesting. Mm -hmm. Monsters of the Multiverse is very interesting because we've been discussing for a long time on this channel. Mm -hmm. Since the, there have been rumors about D&D 6E and are they going to do it? Is it 5.5? Is it 6E? And here's the thing. We were told explicitly that a new edition of Dungeons and Dragons is coming in what did they say, 2024, I want to say, mm-hmm. um, was the estimated date. Now, we've been talking about what that actually means and what they mean by that because mm-hmm. I just don't, even though 5e's been around for a while, mm-hmm. I think the worst thing you can tell people, whether they're, new, whether they're new players or they're old players who have collected a lot of books and a lot of source books and, and materials and things like that is, All the old stuff is old, Mm -hmm. and the new stuff is its own thing now, and go buy new editions, and go buy, and like, did you think this was overwhelming before, and you were trying to get into it? Guess what? Now you got to start over. So my personal, as as someone who's pretty fucking deeply invested in what Dungeons and Dragons is doing, Mm -hmm. I want backwards compatibility, absolutely. Mm -hmm. The only other time we've seen that is 3.5, which Mm -hmm. is backwards compatible. Um... But I don't think that we necessarily have to stick. Like, they made, they did it once. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, there's no reason they couldn't make Dungeons & Dragons 6th edition and make it backwards compatible with these books that they've been releasing, like, fucking wildfire. They're just dropping books on us. But I am in favor of a player's handbook Mm -hmm. that is updated. There is a lot of base lore for Dungeons & Dragons that could be improved. So, it turns out that that is basically what they are doing they're they are making everything backwards compatible they are saying we understand we've been putting out fancy books and we've been putting them out like never before mm-hmm. i think there have been more source books in the last D is 50 it's turning 50 mm-hmm. and i think there they there have been more source books in the last 10 years than the previous 40 years combined mm-hmm. so they've been putting out a lot of stuff they also know that there are things that need to be updated so with Monsters of the Multiverse, this is like really interesting. It has a lot of new rules. Mm-hmm. It has a lot of new stuff, particularly the um, a lot of the race essentialism stuff that we've been talking about with D&D, the stuff that we don't like where um, this, this race is bad. This race levels up this because mm-hmm. this race yeah. is built to do this. People are we're a little icked out by that. Yeah, and they've been making progress on things like orcs, for instance. They've been making progress on, um, you know, the the way that they, um, just deal with race in it. Mm-hmm. I was hoping they'd move away from race entirely. Um, not seemingly the case at the time. Yeah, I was hoping that we would get things more in the like vein of lineage, where we would eliminate the idea that any race is any particular thing. 
like you could have race, but then don't give like this is what that race does. You can't. You can't. Right. Um. I mean, so so they've been working on that. They started working on that with Tasha's Cauldron of Everything a little mm-hmm. bit, and now in this new uh, Monsters of the Multiverse, mm-hmm. they are as well as ma- Ben Rickman's Guide. Yep, they are making a lot of changes with that, like a lot of changes. So. This is getting rid of that sort of uh, that sort of racial essentialism. Mm-hmm. It's also um, simple. It's also not simplifying. I don't want to say simplifying monsters because that's not what they're doing. Uh, but they are creating a bunch of new monsters that have new rules, new things you can do with them. Mm-hmm. A lot of them, like alignments, are disappearing more and more from monsters because yeah. why? Like uh, a a species doesn't need to have an alignment. Mm-hmm. So you don't have to worry about picking a particular monster and being like, mm, but this monster wouldn't act this way in this situation. You have it like what I like about the about the new sort of the new uh, the new guard of D and D designers that they have right now mm-hmm. is the idea of like we're just giving you basic rules and like your story is the most important thing. Yes, if you think this monster doesn't act this way, cool. If it yeah. works in your story, go. We need to give you things like hit points and weaknesses and shit like that. Yep. You do the rest. Um, so, essentially, the first half of the book is uh, 33 previously released races for player characters um, that are being reformatted into the um, revised format that we saw in Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, where they released a few of the races when they were particularly, you know, hitting on orcs. Um, so they said we really wanted to reinforce that all I'd of like the game's races are just, just as flexible as humans when it comes to the range of culture and personality. Because that's exactly what they did. They were like, humans, you know, whatever, do whatever you want. Yeah. What do you think? What do you think humans act like? Where are you from? What is that about? Tell us about your town and, and your then, history. Right. Oh no, but orc carry club and mean and dumb. Wait, why? We've had our issues with various forms <laughs> of elves. We've had a lot of things pop up. So they're simplifying that and I think what'll be a really effective way. This is very interesting. So this doesn't confirm what is happening, whether it's sixth edition, whether it's 5e, it does imply of backwards compatibility. There's no reason that they would do this right now and then in less than two years have something non-backwards compatible when they just re-released the 33 races. Like that's ridiculous. Yeah. But um, we don't have any actual confirmation of what's coming in 2024 yet. No, we don't. Uh, the second half of the book is 250 monsters, some of which are entirely new, mm-hmm. which is very exciting. Uh, monsters are no longer defined as residents of a particular plane. Uh, alignments have been filed off in some places. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, this is all really interesting. Uh, and they're making one more major change with challenge ratings. Um, what they're What they're basically doing is like, Challenge ratings are good, mm-hmm. but they can also be tough. Right. You can say like, oh, if your characters are level this, then a challenge rating this monster. Challenge ratings are just a way for a, 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 a DM to go, oh, this is what you should be fighting right now. Mm-hmm. The problem is, depending on how your characters decide, how your players decide to level up their characters, what yeah. they decide to do. Challenge ratings are not realistic. It does not work. Like, I, there's no... There is no one size fits all with that. You can't be like, oh, well, this is good for your level. But what are your builds? What are you carrying? What do you have on you? Where yeah. are your hit points at right now? How many players are in your party? We, inter- like, we have the feat system, and the feat system is incredibly interesting. But if you're like level seven and you've taken three feats along the way, mm-hmm. you can't fight this challenge rating. Right. You can mimic it. <laughs> you can talk back to it in its own voice. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, there's some really interesting stuff. So they are, and even the designers say like, yeah, it's more of an art than a science. We, we sort of use it as like a basic thumbnail guide. Yeah, essentially they said it's more for game designers than for players and more for game designers than DMs. You know what I mean? If you're building a whole world within Dungeons and Dragons, that might be helpful for you for placing monsters. If you're just a DM looking to run an adventure and figure out if your team can hit it, ah, I don't know about that necessarily. So they didn't change any of the challenge ratings of any of the creatures, but... If let's say, you know, a beholder has their challenge rating, they made sure that all of them were held to the same standard of it. So therefore adding more like legendary actions to some of mm-hmm. these creatures, um, right, that spells that's, and melee attacks. That's the other thing is like a, like a beholder 
at a, like a high level beholder, mm-hmm. like does some wild fucking shit. Yeah. But then like if, I don't know, if you level up just like a, a fucking, I don't know, like a panther or some shit, you know right. what I mean? And the pan, and it's like, no, but this is a really big challenging panther. It's like, but not really. Because mm-hmm. even though it's challenge rating has gone up closer to the beholder, mm-hmm. it still do just be panther. Right. So now there will be like essentially, I believe, multiple movement sets essentially. So you could encounter a monster and be like, oh, I'm looking at the party and we've got a lot of mm-hmm. ranged spell casters and these kind of attacks would be either mm-hmm. more viable for them or let them off a little bit easier. Um, which like, you know, you can always do if you're willing to homebrew, but like that's not realistic for everybody. Yeah. And I think I think one of the things that they're trying to do with a lot of these, with with the newer books and things like that is, you know, there are a lot of things about D&D that are intimidating to people starting out, depending on who they are, their personality type, stuff like that. You know, some people are like, but what am I, like, I'll improv anything. And I'm the sort of player where, like, if you put me in a room, I'm going to be like, I do this. And if Mm -hmm. you, you better tell me no. Because I'm going to try, you know? Yeah. Some people are like, well, what do the rules say that I can do? Right. What Some, a, what, yeah, sometimes it's easier for people. Yeah. What can I, what can I actually do? Mm-hmm. Um, and so they want it to not feel like you're, you're, you're closed in by those rules. They mm-hmm. want to teach people to make up these stories and take a little more freedom and have a little more power in the worlds that they create. Yeah. So. It would appear that this was supposed to be available in time for the holidays. Global supply chain issues affect everybody. And now here's the bad news. Demi. Right now, all we have announced, and I'm sure that this is going to be updated, is it available in a three book set that comes with Tasha's Cauldron of Everything and Xanthar. Um, Tasha's Cauldron, Cauldron of Everything and Xanthar's Guide to Everything. Now. That is a $170 set. It comes with a beautiful DM screen, a beautiful box. Like, I'm not going to tell you that that's not a $170 set. Look at that. It's beautiful. And they got they got the regular and the fancy. Uh-huh. And God, do I love Dungeons & Dragons fancy covers so much. Now, these look different than the fancy covers that they've I'm been leaving. doing. These, these don't... They're clearly going for, uh, hey, this is the new style. A very different art style than, like, I had the fancy cover of uh, Wild Beyond the Witch. Yeah, year. that has that has more of like a classic Art Deco sort of sort of vibe, like an mm-hmm. Art Deco poster vibe. And Whereas, like, yeah. if you look at these ones now, they're going for like a much more uh, clean, high fantasy fucking. I don't, I don't know. I'm having a hard time saying which I like better because I genuinely really like. I like both them both styles, but I do think this is beautiful. This is a really I like the beautiful clean aesthetic of this. I I admire the design of the fancy books now, but that that deco, mm-hmm. that sort of or baroque or deco design mm-hmm. doesn't appeal to me, mm-hmm. I think as much as it, as much as it appeals to you personally. Mm-hmm. And so for me I'm like I could get regular or I could get fancy. I'm okay either way. Mm. Um, you know, obviously the regular the regular editions look very much more like your standard kind of graphic fantasy novel kind of cover. Yeah, the fancy editions for me, I mean they have that little bit of like metallic shine to them that's very special on most of them. I love up to this mm-hmm. point the fancy covers that they've been doing. Um, these are cool and interesting, but I will miss the like artistic flair of these being a little more like busy and interesting. Yeah, I think they're both really cool. I want it so bad. Uh, this this gift set it's called the um so. It's debuting as part of the Dungeons and Dragons Rules Expansion gift set. Mm-hmm. $170. I don't love that we're bundling initially. Um, because there's gonna be a lot of people out there who have already spent their money on Tasha's and have already spent their money on Xanthar's, mm-hmm. and they're not gonna be able to get their hands on a physical copy of the book. Obviously, we have things like D and D Beyond where you'll be able to access these things and not have to probably buy them in a bundle. Um, and you know, most of us are using digital assets anyways but yeah uh and if you do if you are somebody who uses digital by the way or you're just looking to get monsters of the multiverse on its own uh instead of getting it this wednesday you're gonna have to wait uh until may 17th 
So there's a five month lead time on getting it in the set versus getting it by itself or digitally, which it's, it's a not bold move. Digitally for five months. Yep. Fantasy Grounds, Roll Twenty, D and D Beyond are all getting it on May seventeenth, along with the standalone book. And I think I'm just gonna go ahead and say this: it's a bad move. I'm also gonna agree that this is a bad move. This is like a it's like a pretty big bad move because hey, how many of you play your games off of the physical books, and how many of you play, for instance, on D and D Beyond? Having that um, accessibility of D&D Beyond is fucking huge in making Dungeons & Dragons a more easily palatable and consumable game for somebody who is new to it. A digital character sheet that auto-populates with all of the feats are is fucking, like, game-changing. Yeah. I, D&D Beyond changed Dungeons and & Dragons, and I think there's a lack of respect for that. You're penalizing the people who mm-hmm. have been buying the books and playing it most yeah. right now. Uh, you like you're not going to get it until it's standalone. I have the other book. Right. I'm, I have the other book. I have the books. I have the books digitally. I and, do it digitally. And here's the thing: even if I get the physical book, I'm not going to work it into a character sheet until I have it on D and D Beyond. Previously, they stopped putting Unearth Arcana on D and D Beyond, and that was also a huge fucking bummer for me because I was a huge avid um, Unearth Arcana player. Mm-hmm. And like, look, you need the UA players in order to get the feedback before you put out the books. They ask people to contribute when it comes to the UA, and I don't do that anymore. And then they just go, Mim. Right. They're like, no, no, no. <laughs> Read about it on our website and then write yourself out a character sheet. Like, come on. And that's the, that's the problem is like when 90% of the stuff that you do for your character happens automatically digitally, what happens mostly for that other 10% is you fucking forget to do it. And then you're forgetting things that are like, you're forgetting advantages or interesting mechanics that your character has. Mm-hmm. Because you have to like, okay, I'm doing it mostly digitally, but I also have to remember to add this or do this manually. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I, from a from a marketing and business point, of course they want to try to get people to rebuy books that they already have. Hey, give the old books to your friends. Buy these new ones. They have beautiful new covers. You get a new you get a new DM screen. Mm-hmm. I get what they're doing. I just like, I'm probably not going to play with this new stuff until May. Yeah, that's the thing. I also won't be. I'm not doing a campaign that I can't have a virtual character sheet on to fucking check and uncheck my spell sheets. I'm not printing things out every time. I'm not doing it. And that's a bummer because this is huge. This isn't just an adventure. Mm -hmm. Like this isn't just one of the books that's like, oh, here's some fun adventures. You know, this is this is a rule adjustment book. Yeah, that's a big deal. And for them to test on this. Is a really fucking bold move. Oh, Somebody and imagine did suggest that there was the possibility that maybe uh, Watsi is trying to develop their own, um, you know, D and D Beyond esque service. But like, good fucking luck catching up. I don't know. Yeah, and also I, I think <sighs> that'd be a weird will. That'd be a weird move for goodwill. Mm-hmm. I I can't imagine. Also, like I'm thinking about, you know, like I'm thinking about DMing right now with all of these with all these new monsters and new rules and stuff like that. And it's just like, no, nah, not without the tools, man. Like running no. an encounter right now, that'd be so much like, ew, gross. Doing it the way the doing it the way the Amish used to play D and D. Uh anyway, but I will say this, if you're just if you're just getting into D and D, uh Tasha and Xanthar, mm-hmm. two great fucking books to have. That's very true. And having it with that new, with this new, I mean, it's essentially a new monster manual. Having it with the new monster manual, I mean, that's huge too. I think that's, I, if you're just getting into it, it's a great gift set. $170 divided by three books? That's pricey. That's really pricey. That's a little what, pricey. what do the books normally run? I'm going to be honest with you, I haven't bought a physical book in a while. I'm very spoiled. Um, what are they, 40? Yeah, 40, 50. So, like, it, it makes 50? Yeah, it makes sense depending, depending on the book. Like, I mean, then you're paying 20 extra dollars. If it's 50 bucks, you're paying, yeah, they're 25 to 50. They range depending on like the size. Yeah. Of the book. So, if they're 50 dollars each, let's even say, because those are pretty hefty books. All three of those are like, you know, pretty, pretty uh, influential to the game. Yeah. So, you're paying ex- an extra 20 dollars for the box and the DM screen? Yeah, for the, for the slip case for the screen. Yeah. And the fancy new covers. That isn't necessarily a fancy new cover. What do you mean? The ones on the left are $170. Oh. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, 
Or is it 152 there? Okay, so it said 170. It's one, oh, but it's 10 percent off. Right it's now, yeah, so. it's 170 for the regular edition, which means that that collector's edition with the fancy covers is probably more. Apparently, just hard to get to. Anyways, um, D and D Beyond has like an official partnership with Wizards of the Coast, but they are not a the subsidiary of. Dungeons and Dragons. They right. are their own thing. Um they've got the blessing and the license, but mm -hmm. um yeah, and I th I think to right now, I think they're probably crunching numbers on. Mm -hmm. Does it make us more money and require much less work of us mm -hmm. and less maintenance and cost to let your Roll 20s and your D&D Beyonds and all of these pay us whatever licensing fee they pay us? Mm -hmm. And just be what the community uses, or at what point does it become more profitable for us to run our own service? I don't know, man. That's a that's a big undertaking for for them to do. They might be doing it. We'll see. I don't think it's I don't think it's great for goodwill. And I also I think it, I, I think if I were them, I would just want to keep this third party for as long as possible. I just want to play the new rules. I Let me want, add it. I just want the new rules. I just want the new uh. rules. That's one of the new rules. I don't ever want to go back to writing paper character sheets. I don't ever want to do it again. I'll print out my beyond sheet. I'm not trying to write it out. Mm -mm. I'm not trying to write down what my spells do. Oh my gosh. We're so, you know, we're getting ready for season three of Failed Save. Which, by the way, there was a couple of people who were like, oh, if you've never played before. And Anthony was like, if you've never played before, these are good books. Failed Save is also a good place to learn a little something about Dungeons and Dragons and fun. Yeah. Uh, but you know we've we have the opportunity to kind of like do do little respects and tweaks on our characters before the new campaign, and you know sometimes that means like you know chirp right now is is level nine, mm -hmm. so like if I want to go back and like really respec him, mm -hmm. I'd tear him down to level three, mm -hmm. and then I got to build all that back up again, and I don't want to do that on paper anymore. No, of course not. That's so much to do. I don't want to do my initial build, much less anything retooling. Absolutely not. I don't want to do my D&D &D taxes. But hey, these characters are getting retooled a little. I don't want to do my, like, that's, it's, you got to do your D&D &D taxes if you want to play D&D. &D. Mm -hmm. I like that I have the software that does my D&D &D taxes for me. That's all. I agree. That's all. Um, yeah. But hey, join us on Friday when Field Save comes back. And you know what? We actually have a piece of Pixel Circus news. I'd like to acknowledge it here. I talked oh, okay. about it on my stream a little bit. All right. Um, we just, as a company, and for the sake of Vince Casso, we have to acknowledge um, something that happened on Twitter this week. Um, how do you feel about it being right over your head, Anthony? I don't like the photo. So the fact that it's right over my head, um, what I told Vince yesterday is I'm glad that I'm glad that everything turned towards this mm -hmm. before it got a chance to turn towards my photo. You no one said turn towards your photo. I got a couple comments about the photo. I think the photo's weird, but that's okay. There's no comments about your photo. Anyways. <laughs> um there's a town called New Apichum. Apichum. Which is which is Latin for for peak, or mountain or something like that, you know. Vince Vince loves his language stuff. It, the the new logo is fire. Huge shout out to Vacuous Mermaid for being amazing and talented and putting together a fucking absolutely fire logo when I gave him nothing to work with. Um, that says New Ape Come, and I want you to know we're aware. And there's nothing I can do about it. He he wants it to be Ape Come. He just. He wants it. He didn't want it to just be, he was explaining he didn't just want it, the Latin word, the, the mm -hmm. word apicium is A-P-I-C-U-M. Uh-huh. And he didn't want it to just be the Latin word. Hey, Vince, this is the sort of thing that I tell Vince sometimes. Hey, Vince, we don't speak Latin. It's cool. <laughs> you could have just kept it at, you could have just kept it at Peachum. So I just wanted to acknowledge it. We've been getting a lot of messages about New Ape Come. And uh, when the season starts, and we do inevitably probably cross through New Apichum, I hope you will be there. I, I hope you will be there to Vin just tear the chat apart. Vince is like, I mean, I'm going to say it the right way. I was like, yeah, and we'll correct you. 
Yeah, we will. We're going to say it the right, right way. Yeah. Ape come. Hey, everyone. <laughs> Join us in the beautiful town of Ape come when failed save season three. New Ape come. Sorry. Old Ape come is gone. No, it was all crusty and dried up. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I do want to get to a couple things. We started pretty late, so we're going to run a little late. Yeah. Um, we talked last week about the Microsoft Activision Blizzard acquisition and how big of a deal that is for games. Um, but I, I do think this article really puts it in perspective. Um, a lot of people, if you're not like in the games industry, you're just like, yeah, Activision Blizzard, Call of Duty, you know, Call of Duty and uh, Overwatch. Yeah. You know, your uh, few the, games. The big stuff. The big stuff. Warcraft. Your Warcrafts. But uh, Video Games Chronicle posted a list of all of the IPs that Microsoft now owns thanks to this, uh, this deal. Um, there are a lot on there that are crazy. I had forgotten that Activision bought up all of the old Sierra stuff. Mm -hmm. King's Quest, Quest for Glory, Police Quest, like they Space Quest. They own all that stuff. Uh, yeah, I mean, they've got Guitar Hero, everybody. They, They're unstoppable. This is a monopoly. Uh, they've got, I forgot. So here's what's wild. Crash Bandicoot. Mm-hmm. Starts with Naughty Dog on the PlayStation. Yep. Gets sold to Vivendi. Yep. Which gets bought by Universal. Yep. Which makes Crash Bandicoot a multi-platform character. But then Vivendi Universal gets bought by Activision. Activision gets bought by Xbox. Crash Bandicoot is now a Microsoft Xbox character. Yeah, wow. Uh, we've got Spyro on there. We've got Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. StarCraft. Hexen. Doom for nerds? Wizard Doom? You want to play some Wizard Doom? Because you can. This is very interesting. There are a lot of them on here that I did not put together. Like, your Hearthstones are obvious, you know? Yeah. Blur? They've got Blur now? They don't need Blur. What they've... is Gun? Gun. The game where you shoot Gun. That's Pal World. No, no, no. Not Gun at Pal. Gun at other person with just gun. Gal. Just, just gun, no pal. Gun. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's pretty crazy. I, they own, they own, it's so funny. They have Pitfall. They have Prototype if they want to bring Prototype back. They could bring back Skylanders. They own your favorite. They own Spyro the Dragon. <laughs> they have True Crime. They own the True Crime series. Hey, what about this Sleepy Dugs? What about Sleepy Dugs, part two? Sleepy Dugs? They could do it. They won't. They could. Another thing I want to talk about, this is a particular interest of mine. Yes. We have been following this with great interest. And, we, oh, please. And every time it pops back up, we're like, oh, shit, it's still happening. Yeah. I think that um, I have no object permanence for the Rob Zombie Munsters movie. Because how? Because how would I? Would, how is it gonna? And there have been no official announcements that have come out like at all. Everything that we know about Rob Zombie's Munsters has been released through his Instagram posts. And for the most part, Rob Zombie posts on Instagram like it is 2014 on Instagram. I love this. Um, All of them are still like cropped to a square and look like they have the like OG filters on them. I think he's a fan of Lord Kelvin. Yeah. So Rob Zombie just shared this photo and said some damn fine locations here in Budapest. Hashtag Rob, Rob Zombie. Hashtag the Munsters. Um, oh my God, does Rob Zombie hashtag his own photos Rob Zombie? Yeah, he does. Oh, sweet boy. Yeah, he does. Oh, At what Rob a Zombie, sweet boy. Hashtag Rob Zombie. I love that for him. I love that for him. I love that they're they're shooting in a spooky castle. I do love that. Uh, th that's not. I mean, but that's not Mockingbird Lane. That's not thirteen thirteen Mockingbird Lane. That's that's some other location, maybe an old location or a flashback location. That's not their house. No. 
That's not their house. That's a location they're using, and we did find out by that that they're shooting in Budapest. I mean, hell, if they're all in Budapest, they got to be making this thing, right? It's like it's happening. The movie's happening. Like, look, the last photo that we got, I believe, was the costumes Mm -hmm. photo, which was just like them in like, I don't know, a fucking random like empty room with some like. It was in like a yeah, it was in a trailer. It was in some some trailer on set. It looked like. It looked like one of those like business rooms you rent out in a hotel. Oh yeah, that could have been too. And so I was like, Robert, you making this by yourself? Are you putting on a little show? <laughs> Are you putting on a production? It's in your ca- yeah, costumes. I do feel like Rob Zombie is making this movie just through sheer force of will mm-hmm. and like gift cards. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I get the feeling like Rob Zombie is just is just he got a lot of like iTunes gift cards mm-hmm. or like Robux or something. Yeah. And is like trading them in to make in like to make in a Monsters movie and I like that for him. Make yeah. your movie, man. Yeah. But where do we think this movie ends up? Like this is a this is a VOD movie, right? This doesn't go to theaters. No, I don't think it goes to theaters. Not with the way this is being promoted. Or lack thereof. Um, do you think it could even be an HBO Max? Uh, yeah, potentially. Potentially. Let me see if there's anything. I mean, it's his own. Okay, it's Universal Pictures. So it will be distributed. Par- it, no, it's not Paramount. It, uh, it will be distributed by Universal. Uh, yeah, I think Universal is Paramount+. Plus. Where does Universal distribute? Um, no, Univer- oh, Peacock. NBC Universal is Peacock. NBC Universal is Peacock. Oh, God, it's going to be a Peacock exclusive. Maybe. I, you know, I would like to see one of, the big, one of the big streaming outlets buy it up, you know? Just because Universal is, is the studio behind it doesn't mean that they're looking to distribute as well. Yeah. They, they could go to a Netflix or, a, or an Amazon Prime. Yeah. Um, I could definitely see it being on Amazon. I will agree. Maybe it'll be free on Peacock, and maybe you'll pay to rent it on Amazon. Oh, oh, oh. They are, according to this, it's going to be released theatrically with a simultaneous Peacock release. I'm guessing limited theater release. For sure. We're not getting a full theater release for that, if any. This is also just like the current Wikipedia, and not- for all we know, Rob Zombie is literally writing this himself. Yeah. <laughs> not with same, with same Day Digital. There's no way this is a wide release. It's going to be a limited release. I don't think there's enough. Listen, I would love to live in a world where I could look at you and say, we're all waiting for a new Monsters. Of course. I wish that was the world we live in. I want, I want to be in that world where everybody's waiting for a new Monsters as much as we are. I don't think we live in that world. Well, and I mean, here's the thing. I am, I am of the opinion that the Monsters is valid and good in many ways. Love the Monsters. Problematic in many ways. But also, they are a little bit of a sanitized Adams Family. No! They didn't take on issues like the Adams Family did fighting Wait. about it. Oh my God, I never thought about it. They're just the Adams family. <laughs> um, it's true. They're a little bit of a sanitized Adams family. Um, in that they're like, ooh, but we're not gonna like <laughs> touch on anything here. I mean, and the, the Adams family was out in the '60s, and mind you, it's a '60s show. But like, the biggest thing the monsters ever asked was, "Who's the real monsters?" <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. People can be the realest monsters, and monsters can be the nicest people. And right. Th- and that's as far as they got. Uh. Brian Fuller, of course, tried to do 1313 Mockingbird Lane, which was like a darker, like mm-hmm. he did a pilot which, which ran once on television and then disappeared. I never saw it. Jerry O'Connell as Herb and Munster. Huh. It was very good. Uh, it was, I think it was right before Pushing Daisies. Interesting. Um, it was very good. The Munsters are blatantly anti-racist. Yeah, they are. Like that's the thing is the Munsters are like, the whole idea is, the monsters are the good people. Mm-hmm. Don't you just because they look like that? Mm-hmm. Don't you dare! Um, and it is fun that they just dunked on Marilyn all the time. Mm-hmm. I do like that. Mm. Uh, but you know, look, I would love to see like Rob Zombie. Obviously, obviously, isn't going to be happy doing just that. No, no. I do think that um, the ideal version of a Munsters reboot for me 
would be telling it as a a more meaningful story of these people living in society. I don't see that being what Rob Zombie is about to do. I see us taking no meaning, all grit. (laughs) Yeah, Rob Zombie is going to be like, the Munsters invite their neighbors over for dinner and and kill a lady in front of them and eat the flesh. Yeah. You know, and they're just like, oh, do you want more flesh? And I'm going to watch a, it. And it's at a Dutch angle, <laughs> you know. And I'm going to watch it. I'm going to watch it. But I'm telling you, if you haven't, I think it's it's got to be streaming somewhere. If it's not, then it's probably bootlegged a million times on the internet. Look for 1313 Mockingbird Lane. Mm-hmm. Watch the Brian Fuller one. It was pretty interesting. It, it could have been cool. Uh, somebody in the live studio audience mentioned that like Brian Fuller really only did it so he could make Hannibal. It was like a it was like a two deal thing. They were like, mm. if you do this, we'll let you do Hannibal. Um, but he didn't like he didn't throw it away. Right. All right. Um, what do we have time for? One last thing, or are we signing off, Anthony? I want to do one last thing. All right, tell me what. I want to talk about Tucker Carlson. <laughs> Oh, boy. I want to talk about Tucker Carlson, which we normally don't do on this. No, because who the fuck likes to talk about Tucker Carlson? And he's got, but this is so funny. Let's provide a little context first. Sure. So uh, the m ms company um, put out a, a real big statement this week leading the charge in feminism. They said, Lady m M&M, no longer wear heels. And like, that's fine. Hey. We're not going to sexualize this anthropomorphized Eminem anymore. I'm deeply in favor. Don't get me wrong. I want that to stop happening. Um, But, like, they really said it like they were solving sexism. And, you know, okay. Yeah, they were <laughs> like, M&Ms. they were like, the orange Eminem has anxiety. And, mm-hmm. like, they were like, these are, these are characters with personalities. And, <laughs> look, like, hey. Yeah, don't sexualize an Eminem. Hey, listen. <laughs> Listen, we know that there's a child slavery suit going on for you right now, Eminem Mars, uh, but this is really not what's going to distract. Um, uh, Santo Hart- Hartono said, not sex positive. Hey, sexualizing a anthropomorphized Eminem is not sex positive. Actually, but let's see. Maybe it is. Here we go. We have a clip of Tucker Carlson here. Uh, maybe, Maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. Let's let's make sure. Let's. I guess we'll find out. I think M and M's were pushing intolerance, but oh, do we have it? Pause. Change. You're seeing the changes right. There's no audio coming from your computer. <laughs> What's going on here? Ah, there we go. Incorrect buttons. Buttons. I think M and M's were pushing intolerance, but they were. They've been changed. You're seeing the changes right now on your screen. The green M&M, you will notice, is no longer wearing sexy boots. Now she's wearing sensible sneakers. Why the change? Well, according to M&Ms, quote, we all win when we see more women in leading roles because leading women do that not quote wear is out sexy of context. boots. Leading women wear frumpy shoes. The frumpier, the better. That's the rule. The other big change is that the brown M&M has, quote, transitioned from high stilettos to lower block heels. Also less sexy. That's progress. M&Ms will not be satisfied until every last cartoon character is deeply unappealing and totally androgynous. Think. (laughs) Tucker Carlson really said, why won't you let me fuck the green M&M anymore? Tucker Carlson Imagine working at Fox and having to be so against identity politics that you have to go online to the world and say, I wanted to fuck the M&M. Hey, uh, they will not rest until the M&Ms are unfuckable. Wait, there's more. (laughs) Until the moment you wouldn't want to have a drink with any one of them. That's the goal. When you're totally turned off, we've achieved equity. They've won. Meanwhile, in a nod to the burgeoning wellness movement, the orange... (laughs) So, so Tucker Carlson... (laughs) Tucker Carlson is fully willing, is fully willing to come out and say, I can't believe they made the green M&M no longer sexually appealing to me, 
Tucker Carlson mm -hmm. who wanted to have sex with the green M&M. Jesse PB in the live studio audience said, apparently the difference between wanting to sex a candy and not is the shoes. I think that's a very important take on for this. Some, also, for some people it is, and we don't kink shame. I'd also like to clarify, no, I'm going to kink shame wanting to fuck candy. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to kink shame <laughs> Tucker Carlson. Um, the, the quote, by the way, that he put with the green M&M was not in response to them changing her look. They did personality profiles on each of them. And it was just, that's part of her personality, is I like seeing women thrive. That's unrelated to the shoes. They just gave her a full personality like they did for all of them. And hers was, I like supporting my friends. I like seeing my friends win. And I listen, think everyone wins when we see women successfully thrive. And hey, I, and I love that for the green M&M and I love that for all of us. But I, I do want to go back to Tucker Carlson saying they won't stop until you don't want to have a drink with any of these M&Ms. Tucker Carlson using old conservative man speak to say, fuck. They say, go have a drink. When old conservative people want to talk about uh, 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 fucking, they say, go have a drink because old conservative men can't, can't get a woman to have sex with them sober. And so they try to give, get them drunk. He, Tucker Carlson is willing to come out against quote unquote identity politics so much that he is willing to say, I'm mad that they don't want me to date rape the green candy anymore. Why won't you let me date rape the candy anymore? That's fucking weird. Mm -hmm. Why would you make that your personal? Why would you make that your personal political stance on national television? Tucker Carlson. I'm not surprised i hear it and i'm just like yeah of course you wanted to fuck the m m of course you did of course you did i think at some point that man has to accept that no human woman ever would and at some point he has to be like anthropomorphized m m i mean if i had a chance of course i would anything that wears high heels if it would be willing i would take hey tucker carlson smash or pass a gobstopper <laughs> Smash or pass a gobstopper with sneakers? <laughs> Is it a pass now? Because I'm going to be honest with you. If that green M&M in sneakers with sensible tights on wanted to fuck you, you're not in a position to say no, my guy. Tucker Carlson will take what he could get. <laughs> Holy shit, You know he shit, would. You know man. he would say yes. You know he would say yes. Green M&M walks up. Sensible shoes. Tucker Carlson. The greatest offer he's ever gotten. I mean, for me, it's more the it's more the personality and the attitude of a candy that makes me want to fuck them than what they're wearing. You know, won't eat Skittles because it's too gay. <laughs> this, I I love this. I love this. Sometimes they go so far that they just they come out the other side and they're their own parody. And I just can't believe it. I can't believe it sometimes. <sighs> can't believe we're ending the show on Tucker Carlson admitting that he wanted to fuck candy. Um, do you want to do one more? I don't think I can. Okay. I, think that, I don't think I have it in me now, Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> I had seen posts going around about it, but I hadn't watched the clip. It's... Because I don't like to listen to Tucker Carlson speak. Who the fuck no. does? No, but it was when I heard that it was just about he was mad that the green M and M wasn't sexy anymore. I was like, "All right, I've, this is this goes into a realm of absurdity that I have to." And it was ten times more absurd than I thought it was going to be. It was so weird. That's so fucking weird. Um, we used to have a real country where the candy was hotter. <laughs> Woo, baby.
You know? Thank you for joining us, BB. <laughs> Thank you for joining us for today's show. We're going to bring it back up. Thank you for starting your morning with us. Even when it ends like this, we do the show every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So we hope that we will see you for the rest of the week. Most of the time, we have good news to end on. Today is simply not one of those days, thanks to Tucker Carlson. Uh, let us know which candy. I'm so sorry. I'm not going to say that. Uh, do join the Discord. <laughs> do join the Discord. It's free. You don't have to do anything. Finish your thoughts, Sage. Free. Please don't yell at me. I'm having a hard time, Anthony. <laughs> Join the Discord. You can suggest stories and things that you want to hear us talk about over there as well. We love it so much and appreciate it when you do. Please don't tell us which candy you want to have sex with. I don't need to know that. Um, we have a Patreon. We do a bonus clip there uh, every single week. This last Friday, we talked about Pokemon. We talked about Legends Arceus. We talked about Pokemon Legends Arceus. On the new overlays, it's over there. But also, when you subscribe to our Patreon at the $5 tier and above, you get access to the entire backlog of its two early experiences. We are making some changes to the Patreon very soon. All of our patrons will get an update. We have some very exciting new things that we want to offer and make some adjustments for our current programming lineup. That's all of my channel stuff. Let's go through and thank everybody who supported us on today's show. But first, Anthony, where can they find you on the internet? You can find me everywhere on the internet at a carboni except for here on twitch where i am at anthony carboni twitch you cowards it's mine give it back to me mm -hmm. you can also find me on my science comedy podcast with jeff canada it's called we have concerns uh that comes out every friday go listen to that it's very good uh and wednesdays you can catch me and sage right now along with uh kind of funny over on their channel uh doing a book of boba fett uh watch along series it's very good it comes out every wednesday the same day that the boba fett comes out uh, and we love a Star War. Mm -hmm. Sage, where can they find you? You can find me everywhere on the internet at Not Sage. I stream on my channel every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Saturday. Uh, you can also find me on this channel all the damn time, including this Friday for the campaign premiere of Failed Save. In person, everybody! That's right. Come join You're us. all invited. <laughs> to, be, to be there in person in We're the room. We're going to be here live in person. The energy is going to be absolutely bananas. So I hope you'll see that. We'll be at 7 p.m. Pacific on Friday. If you're new to Dungeons and Dragons, don't worry about it. It's hardly Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> it's, really, it's really just a bunch of people yelling. Uh, but it's a very good time. You can also find me on the Black Dice Society for D&D &D stuff and on Smosh Games all the damn time, including this afternoon. Hey, how about that? Folks. We do want to give a big thank you to everybody who directly supported us during the show today. Remember, uh, all of your subscriptions go to support the channel and the overall costs of running this entire thing, uh, because we do make the all the shows in a shed. There are like there are like ten of us total across all the shows, and we make game, we make these things in a shed. Uh, and then your donations, uh, your direct donations and tips go to whatever hosts you see on the screen at the time. So right now that would be us. Uh, we want to thank everybody for your uh, direct support during the show. Short Nerdy Man with the resub uh, using the Prime. Take those busy bucks for two months. Welcome back. Uh, we want to uh, thank uh, we want to thank uh, Santo Hartono with for the cheers. We want to thank uh, Emily Thirteen with the tip, saying Happy Monday. I'll take one of whatever Anthony is having today. Who baby. It's a weird place in my brain today. I don't know if you noticed. Uh, Danny Boy's Calling Pipes, giving the, the Tier 1 sub to Vacuous Mermaid. Thank you very much. Uh, Vacuous Mermaid, of course, of that very good new failed save logo. Uh, Lexia with the tip. Thank you very much. Uh, Anonymous with the tip. Whoever you are out there, you secret defender. Thank you. Uh, GM for Life with the cheer. Thank you. Danny Boy's Calling Pipes with another gift sub. Martini's for two at six with a gift sub. Thank you. Danny Boy's Calling Pipes with a tip saying, want to start the new donation bar or want to see the new donation bar start to fill up. Also, Sugar Breakfast. Look at the, look at the new donation bar. It's working. It's working. And it's cute, isn't it? Yeah. Danny Boy's Calling Pipes with the gift sub. Revolver Ocelot with the resub for eight months. Thank oh. you so much. Uh... I am Mr. Bo. Thank you uh, for the follow. Flannel fries with the tip for six ninety. Nice. Martinis for two at six with the cheer for three hundred bits. We'll get, we'll get better on this system. But yeah. Danny boy's calling pipes, gifting hella subs. Just incredible. Thunder cabbage with the bits. Thank you so much. Kiata groovy with the resub for ten months. 
Jesse PB with the resub for five months. New looks, new campaigns, uh, new friends. Excited for this year at Pixel Circus. Uh, us too. Thank you so much. Uh, Danny Boy's Calling Pipes with another gift sub. Uh, another couple gift subs. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. much. Kaylin Rohr with the gift subs. Ooh. Thank you so much. Y'all are spicy. So All right. spicy. And we are caught up. Thank you, everybody, for supporting the channel today. We love you so much. We hope that we will see you on Wednesday. Take care of yourselves. Bye, BBs.